It is Westmead against Wexford at Cusick Park at half six. And then Dublin play Kilkenny at Parnell Park at seven. Tomorrow in the Munster Senior Hurling Championship, Brown Robin Waterford play Cork at Walsh Park at two. Then Limerick and Clare go head to head in Ennis at four. Joining us to talk all things hurling now is the former Waterford player and three time All Star, Noel Connors. Noel, how are you? JD, how's it going? Good, thanks, Noel. Good, good. Uh, good if you're a Leinster fan and uh, a 40 points to 17 win over to lose here at Lansdowne Road today. But in terms of the hurling, I suppose we'll start with Kilkenny in Dublin at Parnell Park at 7 o'clock, Noel. Uh, so Connor Delaney replacing the injured Hugh Lawler at full back for Kilkenny. Dara Gray and Fergal Whiteley get the nod for the dubs. Nine years since Anthony Daly's Dublin beat Kilkenny. Now they're managed by Maddie Kenny. 13 points between them in the league. Does that win over Wexford, Noel, suggest that Dublin have closed the gap? You know what? It's, it's very, very hard to know. Um, it only really feels, John, like it's, it's this time of the year that championship really begins because the first game or two does not really hold up a stake as in people are trying to get to the pitch of the game, but also trying to feel each other out. So it's a lot more, there's a lot more on the line now, obviously, because teams are starting to wonder, are going to make it through? Are they going to make it to a Leinster or Munster final? So it's, it's a real kind of knockout feel. So it's great that it's what the 14th of May today and we're talking about teams potentially being gone. Is that a good thing, though? Absolutely. I, I think that there always has to be something at stake, um, regardless of what it is, particularly at um, elite level um, sports. I think there has to be something on the line. Um, so I think the games over the next kind of week or so, you'll definitely see a change in those mentality, but also in maybe hurling styles, but also maybe the additions of new faces into the setups. Um, I'm sure managers are a lot more equipped with strategic than I am, but I'm sure a lot of them have held a few players back for obvious reasons. We've seen even in the in the in the Munster match tomorrow, you have obviously Jamie Barron playing his first game in in 2022, so that's kind of an indication where where teams are at. Dublin, okay, let's start with them. Donald Burke has scored 36 points in their wins over Leash and Wexford and uh, Westmeath. But do they need more of the other forwards to kind of shed the, share the load, do you think? Absolutely. And you know what? He's been phenomenal. I watched him even in the county final with Nafini. He, he was very, very impressive. And uh, he was always kind of earmarked as a kind of a, a special player. And he's he's a very natural hurler, um, which is fantastic. And uh, he's definitely someone that's going to be needed to kind of keep an eye on. But no better team than Kenny to do that. Um in fairness to Dublin, I think that they're certainly coming closer to where they were with someone like Anthony Daly, as I said. I think you mentioned as well the last time that Dublin beat Kilkenny in a meaningful game was 2013 or something, is what, yeah. I've, what I've checked. So um, I do think the gap has kind of closed a small bit, but I still think they have a small bit to do to get over the line tomorrow, despite the fact of being at home. OK, so 7 o'clock this evening, Parnell Park, uh, throw in. The importance of Owen Cody, he seems to be coming the, the central forward at the moment. Is that uh, an accurate reflection of, of his play? Yeah, and it's, uh, I suppose it's, he just seems to be a kind of a, an old school Kenny Hurler. He's kind of a fellow that just gets the ball in his hand, he just runs very direct. And it's, it's lovely to see because I suppose in the last couple of years you've seen players where they're hitting balls into space and at times it's very, very difficult to defend it. But high low if there's two or three people around him it doesn't really matter he just puts the head down and, and takes the man on he's he probably resembles a, a younger version of eddie brennan um back in the day um but he certainly uh, stepped up to play this year and it's been an incredibly long year for him as well so it's it's great to see that he has the athleticism and also uh plenty in the tank to keep going are kilkenny all ireland contenders is that a rhetorical question? Well, it's just the last few <laughs> uh, years they've just fallen short and maybe they have not been able to deliver 80-minute performances and there could be schools of thought whether, like Brian Cody, um, maybe they need a freshness there on the sideline or whether Brian Cody's actually getting the maximum amount of players that aren't of the calibre, uh, with no disrespect to them, of the team, of the, the Golden Generation team, the best team of all time, 06 to 09. Where do you sit on the fence in that regard? Yeah, like I, I never, I never ever write off to Kenny. I think probably one of the best games, and it probably wasn't highlighted that much, was last year. Kenny played Wexford in, I think, it was the first or second round of the Leinster title, Leinster um, Championship, and it was just a fantastic game to be at and watch. Um, so from going from from that to now, I think they've certainly gone leaps and bounds. Um, look, you're always kind of go, you're always kind of comparing to what they used to be and, and maybe that's not a, a good thing to do at times yeah. because as you said that was an incredible generation of players and probably the best we've ever seen and will ever see 
no 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 different than what we've seen with the dubs over the last number of years. So it's it's very it's very unfair, I suppose, at times for us to compare them to what we've seen, we'll say for ten or fifteen years with that Kenny team that came through because they're different. Um but I do think the district Kenny team are 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 there is definitely something different and special about it. There's quite a lot of young lads coming through, which isn't the traditional Kilkenny kind of makeup. Whereas in the past you would look at teams, even even say that special team that we talk about, a lot of them wouldn't have made the actual team or the panel until they were maybe 24 or 25 because it, Cody wanted to have a couple of years of threatening condition and also, I suppose, a bit of experience in and around the setup before they played. But obviously that's not the case anymore and you don't have that um that freedom to be able to do that so there is certainly a lot of youth in there which is great because you'd hope that they'll stay on for quite a few years to come and i watched them against their underage under 20 against um galway and again last week and and there's certainly a good few lads come through that as well would you expect them to so be not in a bad place John. Sorry? Won't say they're in a bad place anyway yeah, would you expect them to beat dublin tonight <laughs> I do, and ironically enough, I don't think that Parnell Park actually suits Dublin. If you go back to when they bet uh, Galway in the first round last year, the wide open space at Crow Park really suited them because they're incredibly athletic. Whereas I just think that, I think Kilkenny's guile and, and hurling ability, it doesn't matter if it's wide open or it's a bit enclosed, I think that they'll still see it through. It's kind of hard to know where Wexford are at, isn't it? Because they drew with Galway and then they lost by a point to Dublin and... They have Kilkenny coming. They should beat Westmead this evening, but they had a very good league campaign, but they haven't really just ignited yet in the championship. No, and I suppose it's, it's difficult as well with new management uh, and probably trying to play a different style than what they would have experienced under Davy. Uh, so like that in itself takes maybe a year or even two to try and bet in and for players to understand and also for managers to understand players. So I wouldn't be overly critical of Wexford. I still think Wexford were very good. Particularly in the league, they didn't show up on the day against Warford and Nolan Park, but they were incredibly impressive up to that stage. Um, even going back to their championship matches at the start, and maybe it's just the fact that they had a really good run in the league, there was always a higher expectation than than what most people would have expected before they played the league. Um, I certainly wouldn't like to play them in a knockout round because I still think they're incredibly dangerous. Um, they're still missing one or two lads and like Salih Chin and that to come back to full fitness. And he would certainly um, add a completely different dimension, particularly in the half forward line, winning ball or midfield, um, making extra runs in behind the half back line. So um, I still think that Wex would have a lot to offer, and I definitely wouldn't write him off at all yet. If you were going to pick three to get out of Leinster, who would it be now? Um, you're really putting me on the spot Sorry. here now, John. Sorry. I would say <laughs> I, I do think that Galway will get through, I think that Kenny will get through. And obviously, you're probably looking at the dubs. The dubs are on six points at the minute. Uh, Kilkenny, Kilkenny, I think Kilkenny, Galway and Dublin, um, if you're going off current form. But then with Wexford, it's it's just the unknown. It is 17 points to 12 that Galway are leading Leash by now in the Leinster round robin. So Galway on top there as they come up to half time at O'Moore Park. It's goalless as well in the FA Cup final, Liverpool and Chelsea at Wembley. We'll keep you right up to speed until six o'clock. We're on air from the Viva Stadium until then, if you're just joining us, Leinster 40 points, Toulouse 17, a comprehensive win for Leinster who are into the Champions Cup final and they'll play La Rochelle or Rassi 92. Joined by Noel Connors, the former Waterford All-Star, to look ahead to both this evening's matches and tomorrow's games, which we'll focus on now, Noel. Your own Waterford against Cork, 2 o'clock throw in Walsh Park. Waterford um, got the job done against Tipperary, then they lost to Limerick, Cork with two defeats so far. What do you think Liam Cahill has learned from those opening two games? Because you've had a bit of a break. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's 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 a strange one because um, it's it's certainly not the, the topic of conversation right now, and it's I don't think it's I don't think we have the time and energy to discuss it. The calendar probably has has not helped Warford to an extent uh, coming up to this point. Obviously, they've had a break over the last couple of weeks, but before that, obviously getting into a, a league final and obviously win the league final and then turn around quite quickly and, and going into a Tipperary game. You could even see it in the first half in particular. They just weren't at the pitch of the game, and it's, they, they struggled for, for long periods of that. Now, obviously, that was not just their own doing. Tip were very organised, um, particularly from the Water pockets. They were very, very organised, and Water struggled with their own pockets, particularly sharp pockets, for the first half. Um, so at, at that point, I don't think Lee would be overly happy about that. But what I would say is when he injected Austin and Jamie at half time, the tide completely changed. And it was like a completely different game uh, and a completely different team, which is 
brilliant to see because at times when you're going into a championship game and your backs are against the wall, what you want to see is a team that can actually, you know, put their shoulder to the wheel and push and, and, and get through it. And they certainly done it that day. Does home advantage at Walsh Park count for anything? Uh, I was reading uh, Christy O'Connor in the Examiner during the week talking about stats, and they don't show necessarily a strong bias, but I think the more passionate the crowd, the better it will be for both Waterford tomorrow and Clare and Ennis. Yeah, and uh, yeah, look, there's probably loads of statistics on that, and it's not something that I would be au fait with, but it, do, it certainly does. I like, as in, I don't think Waterford lost in Welsh Park for maybe two years or so, which is obviously a. a a pretty impressive stat from from a Waterford perspective, um, but yeah, look, it's 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 strange because you know everyone assumes that it's going to be like a Limerick, Clare, and Waterford's um, kind of three teams through as what we discussed with with the Leinster Championship. But it's funny because if Cork win tomorrow in Waterford and they go and they play Tip in Turles, um it's it's going to see them through, I'd imagine, at that stage. So. It's it's coming to the point of what I said there earlier on. It's it's coming to a championship mode where teams really need to kind of step up and and put what they've done over the last you know four five six months uh, onto the field because before you know it, it's a very short window. And if you don't try and get the best of yourself, you'll find yourself having a pretty long uh, summer. Luke Mead, Connor Lahan, and Alan Connolly they all come into the Cork 15 for tomorrow's game. They just haven't got it going yet, Cork, have they? Uh, what can you put that down to? Is it a lack of physicality? Why have Cork struggled in the championship? It's uh, do you know what? It's it's very hard to know because for long periods against Limerick, they were very very impressive, um, and even that's there was slight stages against Clare where they were where they were impressive. But I don't know. I see some pundits saying that they're struggling with identity, and maybe that's. A fair point. There's probably an amalgamation of maybe two or three different generations in the minute where you have the older cohort of maybe Shami Harnady and, and Hoggy and a few others, and then you have with the likes of your Dara Fitzgibbons and your Coleman's, and then you have younger lads coming through again. So it's probably a blend of playing different systems with different managers over a period of time, and they're probably struggling to kind of to kind of gel those together. But the one thing I would say is if they can you know, tie all those things down, I think that they could be pretty impressive. And bear in mind that they were in the Northern final last year and they didn't get there for, uh, from every other team not playing well. They got there on their merit and um, they were very, very good last year. If Waterford are to win tomorrow, they got 4.20 in the league final against Cork. Uh, they went for goals. Uh, they went for the jugular. Uh, what is the key for Waterford coming over the line and getting their second win of the round robin tomorrow in your view? Do you know what? Uh, do you know what a big thing for Waterford, I think, is tomorrow is to to try and win a more their pockets. Ironically enough, last two weeks ago against Limerick, they struggled for for a long period there, where they where they actually didn't win their own pocket. Take Austin out of the half forward line, and I would say they would have been on single fingers for winning their pockets. Austin has probably been Waterford's best player over the last two years, in my own opinion, and he probably doesn't get the recognition he deserves. Maybe it's the fact that we expect so much from Austin that. If he plays a mediocre game for most others, he would have had a fantastic game. But because everyone is aware of what he can do and his abilities, that there is always an expectation where he's going to score like maybe 10 or points from play or, or 2-2 from play. Um, but what I'd like to see tomorrow from Watford is to actually win more of their pockets, be it short and long. Um, even if you looked at the match against Limerick, I'd say 80%, maybe even plus, that our pockets would have went on the right-hand side of the field. And that was merely the fact that Austin was on that side of the field. So from a Waterford perspective, I think that we need to focus on maybe winning our own pockets and maybe a transition from there because towards the end of the last 15 minutes against Limerick, we got chewed up um, on that particular. 18 points to 12 is the half-time score in favour of Galway against Leash in that Leinster round robin. So you caught it as a Waterford win tomorrow? No? Yeah, I do think Warford will. I do think Warford get over the line. I think that they have certainly played a hell of a lot better. Even if you look at their statistics over the last two championship games, I think their averages are forty-two points versus thirty-three. And you know, all these things are important because they're used to converting scores. They're used to taking shots, and they're used to get their they target obviously getting in positions to take their shots. So that's obviously a fundamental uh, statistic that you look at. I do think they'll have enough, but I'd be very, very weary the fact that nobody expects anything from from Cork. Um, and I think if Cork do get a run on you, I think they're hard at times to stop with the momentum because they play a completely different game. And you can even see it. I think they're playing Jamie Harnady in full four tomorrow, which 
obviously is to target Ariel Ball on Conor Prunty, but also to put Hoggy out, out centre forward. And I'd say that's to try and sit off Tyg a small bit because I think it was Noel McGrath got to get four or five points off Tyg in the first round. So obviously Cork are trying different things, which is great to see as well. Limerick against Clare, four o'clock throw in at Cusick Park and Ennis tomorrow. Limerick with three wins out of three, Clare with two out of two. Seamus Flanagan coming into the Limerick team, replacing Cahill O'Neill as centre forward. Do Limerick need to take their foot off the gas a bit? We know they're going to be in the All Ireland series. Like, can they keep on going and going, um, or do they need to maybe save themselves a bit for the challenges later in the championship? I don't think you can. I think that it goes back to the, the very simple point of this calendar year for inter county teams and even for, for club players is incredibly short. So, this notion that you can, you know, turn the switch off for a game and turn it back on. It was never really a big deal, we'll say, in the past, because if you will say you got into a Munster final and you win a Munster final, you're off for six weeks or eight weeks, whereas now you have games coming thick and fast. So it's not as simple as just to say, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe put in like five or six players or we'll, you know, take our foot back down to maybe second or third gear and hopefully that will put in performance. And I don't think that Limerick are built that way. I think that if you look at a lot of their players, they're very ambitious guys and they're trying to leave a legacy, which is completely understandable. Um, so I think that they'll go 100% to every single ball and try and win every rook that they, that they, they I suppose, pride themselves on. Um, so in short, no, I think that Limerick will certainly go out to win. Clare have been resurgent with Peter Duggan and Shane O'Donnell coming back into the fray, finding a groove again. Suddenly they've got options. John Conlon has moved back to centre-back. A bit like Declan Hannan, it's really worked. So Clare will fancy their chances tomorrow. Yeah, it's, um, you know what, if... And this is this is another point as well, which adds a bit of fuel to the fire. Like Watford don't want to go to Ennis hoping that hoping to get over the line in Ennis because Watford don't have a good track record up there. And the reason is, and I think you've already mentioned, is the fact that you know if you have crowds, Christy Connor, whoever kind of mentioned it, it's it it obviously is a lot more difficult. And if you go up to Ennis, it's it's a very very hard place to go. It's probably like going to somewhere like Galatasaray to, as a soccer <laughs> player to try and to try and win a game because you know it's. A very tight field. Um, the the stand is is nearly on top of you. And in fairness to Clare people, they're always good to come and support their own. And there's there's definitely a bit of um, there's a resurgence in Clare. Like there's a lot of people back at the team now, and you could even see it the last day when they were playing that their fans are really there. They're really engaged, and I suppose they're they're hoping that they can get over the line because they know there's a good team there. Um, and even yeah. if you watch that under 17 game during the week against Tipperary, there's a really good crop of players coming through i know they won the hearty cup and that underage and we're very unlucky not to go through to win the crow cup but like there's certainly a lot of good work been done in clear okay and you can see the okay. fruits of that so this team is, is certainly one to kind of watch as well okay briefly no how do you call it tomorrow claire and limerick i go at limerick okay no connors thanks so much enjoy tomorrow